Ready to start. Oh, it's 10 a.m. and I'm going to call this meeting to order. I welcome everyone. And um, we have a draft agenda here. Um, and uh, is there a motion to? So moved. It's uh, there's a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, great. Um, moving to second to approve the agenda. Let me just. Give everybody a chance to look at it briefly here. Long agenda this morning. And um, okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda, uh, please mark yes on uh, your um, on your screen. Uh, right. Yes, I don't have a yes on mine. Don't have a yes. On I'll mine. put a. I'll raise a hand. Uh, raise a hand. Okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, do you have the amendment of the bylaws on this um, agenda here? On the agenda at the end. The oh oh, we get to wait till the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, the agenda is approved. Uh, thank you. You can put your hands down now. Um, we will proceed at this time uh, to our our speaker, um, Jacqueline Callanan, Veritani Elections Administrator. Ms. Callanan, your the Good floor morning. is yours. Good morning. Thanks morning. for this. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, before I start. I just need to acknowledge and tell you all what a fantastic group of people you've sent us to help us. Um, it goes from John Goodman and Rosemary and Gloria that came down and were in the Central Count Station to the un unbelievable hours that the early ballot board put in under the direction of Gracie Acuna. This was a monumental job and they rose to the occasion. And so I want you all to just understand how much they are appreciated and what a fantastic job they do. And I'll go one more step because I do have to call out again, Rosemarie, she has been on top of everything, all the pieces for the primary, she's gotten them to us. In fact, we're in here now and we're absolutely starting to program the runoff election. And so it's because Rosemary is on top of things. Okay, now that I got that said and I get that, people please, please, please understand how very, very important they were. And I know as we go into this by mail process, I know Madeline, Rosemary, all these people will be able to jump in. At, don't know if Jim's on the call in the hours they put in and they can explain to you the actual hands-on that SB1 had us work. It was just a labor of love. That's all I can say. It was a labor of love. So we just had a primary election. It was really tough, I have to say. Um, the hard part was obviously the, the requirements under SB1. It was initiated and implemented on a very, very, very short timeline. Um, the bill came effective December 2nd. The Secretary of State had to redesign so many forms, but the main one was the early ballot, the annual ballot by mail application and the ballot carrier envelopes. And I just want you to take a minute to think all of a sudden we get a new law. The forms weren't there yet, but it became effective for us January 1, because this is when our voters get to send in their absolute 
annual application for a ballot by mail, which is the best thing that's ever happened in Texas. Uh, the people who vote by mail have the opportunity to send in one application in the beginning of the year. And it's good for every single election as it comes down the pike, we get to enter it. So as soon as we started in January, we did not have the new applications because I want you just to stop and think that when this was implemented, this was implemented for 254 counties. It wasn't just Bear County. It wasn't just Travis County. We're talking the entire state of Texas could no longer use the forms that we had in house. We all had to get new ones. And let me tell you the stress that that caused. Uh, I know we all listen on the, on the news and, and we hear what's going on and people say, oh, you know, the supply chain shortage, the supply chain shortage. Well, let me tell you, that's very real. That is, was very real and added to the stress as we were getting these. And I don't know how many of you all voted by mail, but you'll notice if, if you saw it, you notice this time, instead of the entire envelope being a certain color, they just had a colored band down the left side. Because again, that was due to the paper shortage. Prior to that, we had yellow envelopes, tan envelopes, green envelopes, but now we were left with a sprayed on colored band down the left-hand side. When we were, when we got them, when we absolutely were able to get some, so we would take delivery of like a thousand of them and work those and then wait a couple of days till we got some more. Again, this affected the entire state. Now we get down to our voters. And the first thing we noticed with SB1, we, the elections office, could only hand out one application for a ballot by mail, one. We were only allowed to send, give, hand one application to the person that asked for it. Where in the past, we've had people, I mean, we have a phone system and I know a lot of people don't like it, but it's a blessing for the people who are at home and they wanna get those applications for ballot by mail. It runs 24 hours a day. I have a staff member that comes in and sometimes there's 50 messages in it, sometimes there's 150. And they write out and it's like, this is Jackie Callanan, my address. Could you please send an application for myself and my husband? Thank you. And then that's the end of the message. Well, we couldn't do that. We could send an application to Jackie Callanan because that was my voice on the, on, in the mailbox. But we couldn't send an additional one for my husband because we didn't hear from, you didn't hear his voice and he did not actually request one. So we worked through that, having to contact the voters and send them another one asking to request. Um, and in this age of telephones, technology, email, um, we were learning a new way to reach out to our voters. So we get that. We get them the applications. They send in their applications. And so many of them missed putting on the two numbers, now SB1 required either your Texas driver's license or the last four of your social. Oh, then the real frustration started. We'd get these applications in and the law says that we matched the number written on the mail ballot application to the number that we had on file on their original voter registration card. How many of you remember when you registered to vote? How many of us remembered 30 years ago, 40 years ago? Have you had to re-register since then? No. Were those cards at that time, was there even a space to put a driver's license or a social number? So that was our first real crisis. Now we had these applications coming in from our faithful <coughs> voters and we couldn't accept them. We had to reject them. 
and we had to send another application and we sent a voter registration card because they needed to put the numbers on the voter registration card so that we could match it with the application because that's what the law said. So now we're getting, an, we're frustrating our voters. We're getting another round of paperwork for them. We're involving, we're just frustrating them. But we get them to the point where, okay, now we can send you your ballot. We're good to go. So we sent out 23,339 total ballots for both parties. But I must tell you, as you all know, the Democratic Party far outvoted the Republican Party this time. And so on the mail ballot applications that we received, the Democratic Party had over, what did we have? We, we, we handed over to the early ballot board over 12,000 mail ballots. And then the Democratic Party started to go through those ballots. Now, let me tell you, I said we sent out 23,000 mail ballots. We received back in house a total of 18,000. Of that 18,000, 12, six were successfully cured is the word we're using so that we were able to turn them over to the early ballot board. Now the early ballot board, as I said, with Gracie, I see Madeline on, Jim was in there. They worked unbelievable hours. And we, you could walk into the room and you could feel the frustration because the envelopes had been designed for the voters protection because that was one of the first pieces that people said, what about identity theft? Now I'm giving you my signature, my name, my address, and I'm giving you either a TDL or a social. So when the ballot board gets them, now we're ready to take off the flap that has the numbers under those. And again, most of the voters put down one number, either the TDL or the SSN. Very few in the beginning gave us both. So again, the early ballot board started calling people, emailing people, sending reject letters to people, if they got the ballot early enough, we were actually sending the ballot itself back to the voter, asking them, please give us the numbers. So as you all go forward, and you know, I'll get to the end of this, this tale, but there's some things that we just have to make sure we do. The form when it was designed, both the application and the mail ballot, the carrier envelope, it says to give us, write your, well, first it says, write your ID, which, which again, it was another whole subject. And a lot of people thought that was their voter registration ID. Eh, it's your Texas driver's license or the last four of your social. And this, the form says, Texas driver's license and two letters or your SSN. So again, people sent them back. They were really happy. We were good to go. And then they opened them and we had the opposite number. On their application, they may have put the driver's license and sent it back to us, but then they either forgot or missed that fact, but they sent the last four of their social. So again, we could not match it. So what did we have to do? We had to reject it. Get in touch with these people again, contact these people again, by mail, by phone, by letter, by reject letter. So bottom line for the Democratic Party, which, which again did the yeoman's part of this, um, I said, we turned over 12,621 ballots to the early ballot board, 12,621. The ballot board prepared opened, accepted, qualified, all of those words come into play, 9,793 ballots. That's what they turned over to us 
to tabulate. So we still had 2,823 ballots that were rejected. Again, this is now what we're going to, this is the mountain we have to start and, and climb right now. Um, we, we're gonna work with these people. We are gonna have to send another mailing. We're gonna have to send another letter. I think you all will be phone banking. This, once it's fixed, once it's fixed and fixed and fixed, and we convince the voters that they send us both numbers, go ahead and give us both numbers. You stand a better chance of qualifying with both numbers. And so for, for us, for the elections administrators, of course, we, but this is not unique to Bear County in any way, shape or form. It happened in a lot of counties and you know, it's an economy of scale. Uh, some counties may have had 500 ballots to send out, but they still had of those 150 of them be rejected. So it, it's just an economy of, of, of scale on that. And we have to work with these other people to get them now so that they can automatically get this May 7th election. We're having the city, we have the, the county has two amendments. The city's having their bonds. The school districts are having their bonds. That election's May 7th. That's coming right around the corner. So we're gonna work to get these other items cured. And the voters are, every single day, we get more of the, the cured papers, the, the, the forms that the voters sign, we're getting them back in the mail every day. So that system's still working. But again, if anybody has any influence over anyone, we need to go back and either have the legislature change the form to say, and instead of, or give us your TDL and the last four, or we're gonna have to see if we can get the secretary of state's office to do it in a, as an administrative rule. So we're not sure which way that's gonna go, but that's one, it, 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 I hate to say it's one of the simple fixes, but it's one of the things that we have got to start so that, and that's the campaign we need to hear. And again, I will tell you, and, and I'm saying this personally, we reached out to the people who are on the May ballot, the entities for the May 7th election. And we pleaded with them, we had a meeting, they were in here on Wednesday. And we showed them the applications and we showed them the envelopes and we asked for them to get with their consultants so that they can put a big and in between the driver's license number and the SSN. And another piece that was so frustrating, and, I, and like I said, most of you who know me, I am not a negative person. I mean, I, I love this job and we're, we're, obviously you all are involved because it's a passion. It's, it's who we are and you know, like-minded. But all of a sudden everybody kept telling, or I should say the state of Texas kept saying, go to their tracker, go to their tracker. You can fix it online, it's very easy. Well, the tracker did not work for us. It, it didn't work. When we, three days before the cure period, now I'm talking, we've already had the election, March 1st. On that following Friday, the Secretary of State sent us, Bear County, a notice that we had voters who had cured their ballot through the Secretary of State's. We, I opened the file and I pulled it down and we had 39 voters who had been successful out of all of our voters in Bear County, from those 23,000 to the 18,000 we had, 39 had been able to put their numbers in there and we adjusted them. So again, um, from an elections administrator, standpoint, we are just going to be all over the Secretary of State's office because we feel that they really didn't give us the support that we could have used. And, you know, it sounds selfish to say they didn't give us, but I'm using us in the broader sense. You understand that it's us, the voters. That's what was left done. So as you all move forward, and I know you will, and you touch those voters and you hear 
uh, you know, and, and it has to come down to you hear the complaints. That's, that's what it is. I mean, because all elections are local. So as far as that voter who didn't get their vote, it's Bear County's fault. It's our fault that we didn't send them their application. So as, as much as I, you know, I, I, it almost sounds like I'm whining, but please try and explain to them, we had to follow the law. We had no choice other than to follow the law. And we've got to fix it. We have got to fix it. So again, as I started, um, I'm just as proud of the people that you all sent on, you know, Madeline, Jim, Linda, I mean, the names just go on and, and they put days in here. Usually the early ballot board comes and they're in for uh, three or four days and, you know, they get their work done. This was weeks and weeks and weeks. They gave up their weekends. They were here Saturdays and Sundays late into the night. So please, uh, if nothing else from this little talk, please appreciate the people that you have. And if I can put a plug in, please appreciate my staff because this was a new one for us. We're still learning. And uh, again, I'm here to answer any questions you have. I'm sorry I took so long giving that explanation. Okay, I have a question, Jackie. Uh, first of all, I want to tell everybody that Jackie is phenomenal. She does a fantastic job fairly and efficiently. It is not Jackie's fault that any of this happened. But I've done some analyses, and given the general election versus the primary, I anticipate, remember, a lot of these people will not have voted in the primary, so they don't have that knowledge of the problems we've got. Right. I anticipate we're going to have somewhere probably in the neighborhood of 10,000 rejects, at least initially. Jackie, what I'm asking you is, what do you need from our commissioners? Because we need to have a bunch of ballot board people in from day two so that they can start sending the reject curing letters out immediately, not waiting until it's too late. Many of those people didn't get their letters until after it was too late. That, that's my question. That, uh, and that's a great question, Madeline. That, that's a, I mean, you were here. We needed space. And, and uh, again, in, like in elections here, we run our elections on a project management system. So we know where our, where our deadlines are, where our hard deadlines are, where things are supposed to start. And this one was just thrown up into the air because we didn't have the necessary forms. You know, and, and Madeline, we didn't have the forms to start sending out on day two, whenever this started. We didn't get those forms until the early ballot board was already in session. The state continued to change forms. And, and one of the points is on election night, when we left here, the new law says you put up a reconciliation form so that everybody can see you know, what numbers you were looking at. So that form went up on election night, which was Monday night. And on Friday, they sent us a newly designed form that has to be used now for the final. So yes, I, I, the commissioners, I will be going to them for asks. I will be going to them. Um, we, didn't, we didn't realize the impact of the phone calls, the phones ringing and ringing and ringing that we could contact the voter by and have the voter call us. So, you know, we're scrambling at the last minute to set up separate phone lines, set up separate emails. Uh, we're working through that. But to Madeline's point, at some point, we have to figure out where we need just more square footage, just more room for the ballot boards to be able to spread out, more room for us to make a phone bank wall. And that's what it, it turned into. We needed a phone bank. Um, so we're going to look at that. And, and I would hope to be able to come back and, and Madeline, uh, give you some true asks that we can go back in and work as a, as a, a unit and ask them for. Jackie, I wanted to ask you very quickly, uh, how many Republican ballots were rejected? Uh, on the Republican side, um, 1,117. But again, while you all had 12,600 be turned over to the early ballot board, they had 5,477 turned over. So the, re the Republican, I mean, it, it, it was, 
it was the same percentages. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Andres, uh, uh, unmute. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Jackie, for being with us. Uh, a question uh, for you. Have you uh, contacted the, uh, have you been in contact with the other counties <laughs> on this uh, mail-in ballot process? Yes, you... Andres, I, yes, we have. And, and, uh, there, there, we have we have a very strong organization, and within that organization, we have a uh, a subsection which which speaks to the larger counties, and um, those calls have been tough. Again, we're walk our association's walking a very fine line between wanting to absolutely um, decimate the Secretary of State's office for non-support and also knowing we can't do that. And so we have to figure out how to work with them. Um, that's the, the problem is like everything, um, the Secretary of State's office is super, they're good people. There are good people there. But as, I'm gonna say this and it's gonna be wrong, but the, the Secretary of State's office has fantastic people there, but very few people have ever worked elections. They're lawyers who have come in and they haven't been in, in the trenches for, for lack of a better term. I, I think you all understand what we're talking about. And so, you know, they think we can turn on a dime and that we can wait for this form to come down. And if we were a little county, maybe we could wait for the form to come down. But when we're a big county and we have to get 20,000 envelopes in here and we can't find a printer because they don't have paper, this, it would have been much better. You know, I, I always say if I got to be clean for a day, if we had said, okay, here's SB1. We, it's, it took effect December 2nd. The first day to implement it should, should have been six months down the road not a month. We had one month to get ready for it because December 2nd came and then up oh, we had Christmas in there. Huh? And then we came back. And for all of you that know, we have that federal move act that we must have those ballots in the mail. So by the 15th of January, in reality, we had two weeks to scramble to get the ballots. And so again, I'm as proud as I can be for anybody who assisted here. But we've got to put, dare I say, common sense back into this. We, we have to have people look at the timelines. Okay, uh, Linda Maldonado. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I have a question. Um, I noticed a lot of ballots uh, locally, people, names, a few that I, names that I recognize on the roster were returned on March 2nd. Are those, were those statutorily um, be able to be counted or were those, I, there was some confusion about the actual deadline. Great, great question, Linda. And yes, again, um, you know, to Andre's point, you know, we, we have this organization, the Elections Administration, and we noticed after every single election, after every single election, the day following the election, the post office would deliver us mail ballots that were late. So four years ago, we went up to the state and said, we need to be able to count these votes that come in the day after the election, because that was such a huge frustration. It was not part of the voters fault that it didn't get here. And so they allowed us to count any ballots that come in the day after the election that the post office delivers to us, if we can see that there's a postmark on it by seven o'clock on election night. And so we got in four trays on March 2nd, which we were thrilled at and we got to process. And then we had one more step this year, which didn't make sense to us, but we, we appreciated it. Um, the Secretary of State said that we could accept any ballots that were delivered to us on March 3rd, 
that we could deliver them, that they could be delivered and counted. And we were like, well, wait a minute. We know we could do it the day after. What's this second day? Well, come to find out in the Secretary of State's world, it was Texas Independence Day. And Texas Independence Day is a state holiday. So they said, well, because it's a state holiday, you extended a day, which again, didn't make sense for us. It wasn't a holiday for us. It wasn't a holiday for the post office, but you will see other ones that had come in, Linda, at, that we accepted on March the 3rd. And so that's why you will see those. Thank you. Okay, uh, Linda Ali. Uh, hi, Jackie, it's Linda. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wanna commend you and your staff for the, the support that you gave the mail ballot board, but I have a couple of questions having gone through 13 straight days of <laughs> ruling you. work. One was, is regarding the Secretary of State website, you've already addressed that it didn't work, mm -hmm. uh, which was very frustrating for us because they were rolling it out like, like that it was gonna be the panacea, mm -hmm. you know, everybody could go online. Right. But I was curious, when, uh, as you spoke to your other uh, county uh, elections, did it not work for them either? I was very, very concerned that it was just not working for us. I started, you start getting paranoid after a while. And did the other uh, county uh, election administrators find the same difficulty? That's one question. That, that's a great question. And, and, and yes, the short answer to that okay. is yes. The, the longer answer is, just let me take a second. Um, okay. the, the, every state has a statewide database of voter registration. Right. And so Texas has what's called TEAM, the Texas Elections Administrator Management System. Mm -hmm. And everyone that vote that registers to vote must go through that system. The state is the only one who can assign a voter registration number and accept someone as a registered voter in Texas. Well, when the system was built, it the idea was that everyone, every one of the 254 counties would use that system real time so that everyone who was data entering here in, in, in our office, that it would go up and it would be immediately processed. Right. Well, it took about 10 days until everyone realized that that's never gonna happen in Texas. There are the top 30 counties have 75% of the registered voters. And of those top 30 counties, Linda, we can't use that system real time. So we all have a private vendor. We have our own system. What we do here, our work product that's done here in this office, stays in this office on our servers. And then at night, I have a technical person who wraps up all of our work product and shoots it up to the Secretary of State's office. They go through it, they assign the numbers, and then we export it back into our system. Well, the top 30 counties do this process because the bandwidth on team cannot take our workload. So to answer your questions, they were addressing the smaller counties that were using it real time. They were getting fixed. That was saying their tracker was working beautifully. Well, they had not coordinated with the vendors to make the exports fit into their system and the imports drawn down. And so we lived through a month of the Secretary of State saying it was the vendor, the vendor saying it was the Secretary of State. And that's about as close as we can figure right now why the tracker did not work for the large county. So it was not just us, it was your El Paso, your Travis, your Tarrant, Harris, all of the big boys who have to use the system as an export and an import. I hope that helps. Just that, yes, it does help. Uh, second question is the corrective action forms that, that mm -hmm. were returned by the voters. I mean, yes. in my experience, maybe 500, 600 voters, maybe more came in. They're coming in every day, Linda. We're still oh. getting them. Okay, I was curious, are those ID numbers? Because on that, on those forms, the majority that I saw were providing both numbers. Right. Are those numbers going to be able to be entered into the voting record from the corrective action? Yes, form? from the corrective action, absolutely. Okay, great. That, that will help a lot with the it data. It will. Okay, thank you, that's Thanks, it. Uh, thank Barbara you. Baruch. Hi, Barbara. 
I owe you an email. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to ask you right here, Jackie. <laughs> Um, I want to know who designs the envelopes so that people who are 77 like me can't read them. And will they be the same in November? Do you know? They will be identical in November, I'm sorry to say. Okay. Um, and, and yes, the secretary. Okay, again, I'm sorry, I'm going to whine because I'm really mad at the Secretary of State's office. The laws that govern us, when we put out a sample ballot, when we put out a ballot, we cannot go below a 9.5 font, period. That's the universal number. And if we try and squeeze something on a page, we get smacked. We can't do it. Mm -hmm. The size font they used on that form and on those letters, it should be criminal. And I know I shouldn't say that, but you are so right, Barbara. You are so right. Um, and, and the little spaces they give us to put a number in as they squeeze down those numbers and we have to translate or use those numbers. Is it a five? Is it a six? Is it a three? Is it an eight? Um, it, it just mitigates and just keeps on going. So yes, Secretary of State designs them. We must use them. And as I said, we're hoping just to get an administrative rule to change it to and instead of or but we're stuck with those until we go back to the legislature meets again and adjust all these parts of SB1. Okay, I just have one little other question and that is, I know you cannot send two applications to vote by mail, but can voters duplicate, make a Xerox copy of an application to vote by mail or even just send you in all the required information right away, directly. Yes, I'm taking that as a yes. You, you all, the SB1 puts the limitations on public officials with the idea that you can't, can't spend public funds. The, the idea behind it was that the elections offices cannot become resources for campaigns that we can't put through the general fund these applications you know and somebody because before that we'd give up boxes of applications i mean you know even like to you all you'd come down and pick up a case of them and it was like yes we can't do that anymore but they put no restraints on Camp themselves as, as can, can, candidates, candidates can do it, your organizations can do it. You can, again, draw down that application from our website or the Secretary of State's website um, and, and use that and make as many copies as you can. I will tell you that, you know, I sort of stepped in a hole on it because as, as my frustration was coming and these people were calling, I was like, well, just to, to your point, Barbara, go online download it, fill it out, you know, sign it and send it in. But then I was rightfully taken to task that I was being insensitive to the fact that not everyone has a computer, not everyone has a printer. And so um, I'm a little bit more sensitive to that uh, when saying, you know, so I'll leave it there. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> uh, Roy Adele, mm -hmm. you're up. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm off the mainland and uh, it's, you know, 6.30 in the morning where I am, but I really wanted to see this meeting because um, I, in a timely manner, asked for two ballots for my wife and I. We sent everything in in a timely manner. Uh, I put down both the social security number as well as the driver's license number. Um, and uh, we got a call maybe a day before the election saying, we haven't, you asked for ballots and we haven't received anything. And I said, we sent it in a timely manner. And they said something like, uh, you can scan it and send it in. And we did that. And then we got a rejection because it had to have a hard 
signature, meaning they couldn't have a scan of a signature. Um, <clears throat> is if we sent both the EI, uh, the S social security number and the driver's license number <clears throat> in a timely manner, uh, what was the reason that we were rejected for voting? Because we never got to vote. Well, again, sir, you know, I, I'll be glad to check your record, but um, if it got to the point where they ask you to scan it and send it in, when you scan something, that becomes a placeholder um, because the state requires what we call that wet signature. We have to have that original signature. The law is set up that if it gets towards the deadline, if you, if you just get right up smack to the deadline, someone can in fact scan uh, email that document in, but we must receive the original within four days, four business days. So we have a system where when we, we get those, you know, we, we date them, we put them to the side. And then if we do not have the original to attach to this scan or the facts, then it must be rejected if it's not here within four days. I sent all that in in a timely manner well before the election. Um, I did my best. It was in a timely manner. Thank it you. It was sir. rejected. Well, if you would send me your information, I'll be glad to look it up in the system and I can see when anything was time stamped for you. How do I send how do I send an email to you? And I had the same problem. I, I applied twice for a, a, a mail in ballot. And I provided uh, both uh, numbers on the second one. Never, never got anything. In fact, I uh, I, I called uh, your your office a couple of times, and they said it was in process, but nothing ever happened. I voted in person. That's okay. I was able to do that, but there there something did did go wrong. I'm afraid. But I, I'm they, sorry. Uh, to hear that. May I, I'm sorry. May I please give everyone my email address and 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 to sir, so I can check personally for you. My email address is J, last name Callanan, J C A L L A N E N, just like it is on the screen, at bear b e x a r dot org, o r g. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Jamie. <laughs> uh, David, David Kaufman. Yes, my question is about in-person voting. When a person says, I did not receive my ballot, mm -hmm. or they say, I received the ballot, but I want to vote by mail. Correct. When I worked the polls a couple of years ago, the judge would then call the county, and they would check the records. Uh, a voter, a family member who went to vote early, uh, overheard the, the judge telling a, a voter that, that they themselves would have to call the county. Is that a change in the law or is that just an error made by an election judge? It, it, it's, it's an error made by the election judge. Uh, no, the, uh, we handled a lot of that. I mean, we have not changed that policy. We have the electronic poll books. And so if they show up and you know they call right away, we can check, is that ballot back? If, it, if it's not back, we automatically cancel it and you can vote in person with no problems. So that was an error in, in an election official. Okay, hey, Jamie Eikhoff. Unmute yourself. Yeah, I have to unmute because I have three dogs that go crazy from time to time. Thank you, Jackie. I have a suggestion. Um, I had a lot of confusion with my uh, senior voters in my precinct who had sent in their applications. And obviously with all this new stuff, it was nutty. Is there a way um, to send them a notice that says your your application has been accepted, you're good to go, and we will be, you know, just to let them know that they've passed the first hurdle. Um, you know, they sent in the applications, heard nothing, heard nothing, heard nothing, then didn't get a ballot, then started to panic, and you know, we had quite a bit. I mean, I felt so bad. Right. I even had a Republican gentleman call me, and I. I ended up calling John Austin, you know, the the chair to say, help your dude out. He's he's struggling, you know. So mm -hmm. this is not this is not a partisan a matter at all. But um, you know, I think maybe just over communicating with our seniors and disabled folks 
um, would be something that the county could initiate. If it's a postcard that drops in the mail that says you've been approved, boom, you know, because they don't have emails. They don't, you know, often have anything other than postal uh, communications. They don't know how to check a tracker, you know, but just to let them know that their application has been approved for the year, just one time so that they know now you're getting your ballots for the rest of the year. It's just a suggestion. That's a great suggestion. We will look into that. That's a great suggestion. Okay. Uh, Grace Uzumba. Yes. You're up, Grace. Unmute. Me, I'm up. Yep. Hi, Judge okay. Tracy. Hi. Hi, hey, Jackie. Um, I, I don't know how you do it year after year, but you do a great job. Thank you so much. Um, my question was just for clarification, and I think it's already been hit on. If the election, if the mail-in ballots were um, the application were accepted now. Are they how long are they good for? Is it just 2000, 2022, 2023, 2024? When would they have to uh, re request? That's a great question, Judge Gracie. The applications are good for one calendar year. So oh. we, we can accept them, you know, from January 1, and then they will get an, a ballot for every election through December 31st. Oh, okay. And so, can they still get um, can they still get the uh, ballots now, and still get the applications processed now? Yes, ma'am. The rest, it's, it's an ongoing. Yes, it's an ongoing. Doors always open to accept applications. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, great. And uh, when is the registration? Once I'm sorry. Once the registration um, deadline for the runoff. Uh, you're asking me a hard question. I'll have to open up my calendar. Okay. Again, <laughs> as horrible as it is, I've, website. I'll go there. Uh, I, I've I've switched <laughs> to working on the May seventh election right now, which is which is just horrible. The last day to register for a ballot um, for May yours is May twenty fourth. Uh, your last day to uh, ask for a mail ballot application is uh, it's it, it's 11 days before the election. So your last day okay. when we back it up is going to be, oh, I, I want to say, I think it's going to be the 13th. The, it, it is definitely the third Friday, the 13th. Go figure that. Okay. for the May 24th election. Thanks for allowing me to look that up. Okay, two more questions and then we have to wind it up because we do have <laughs> other things to get to. Thank you very much, uh, Jackie. Uh, John Goodman. Hey, Hi, John. Jackie. Thank you so much for surviving this. Um, I have a, a question and a comment. Number one, uh, on the application for ballot by mail, if people put both of their ID numbers and you only have one of them on file, will that cause you to put the other one in their voter record? We're asking and we're waiting for a ruling on that. Okay. Uh, again, on as I said in the beginning, if, if the application was rejected, we sent a voter registration card because the okay. law is written, it must match what is on the registration card. But we said, you know, we've got access to all of these numbers, let us use them. So yep. we don't know the answer to that yet. Okay, good. Uh, and then my comment is as we go forward, um, all of our voter registrars need to be getting both numbers every time from every voter, I, I think. And um, we've talked to the people at Radical Registrars about that. Uh, BCDP, Nicolette, who does our voter registration class, is aware of that. And we do need to talk to all of the other voter registration uh, entities here in Bear County and let them know that that needs to be the policy from now on. Fantastic. That's a great idea. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Last question. Uh, John Courage, you're up. Okay, thanks, Bob. I've got bad video, but can you hear me okay? I hear you. Yeah, Good, thank you. Up a little bit, but go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Jackie, for the work that, that you and all your staff and all of the volunteers who helped did. Uh, it was a mountain to climb. Uh, but one of the questions that came to my mind was as you were talking about adding numbers or adding bulk numbers, I think you said you wanted to change the wording from or to and. 
Yes, sir. And, and what came to my mind was, what happens if uh, you're an elderly person and you don't have a driver's license? Are you going to think, well, I don't have both. It says and, and I only have one. Does that mean I won't be able to vote? So by changing it to and, are you making people think they have to have both numbers and maybe making them feel like they can't vote because they don't have a driver's license? That's a great insight. That's a great insight. So maybe we could put it and slash or, because again, as Barbara said, the, the type on that is so small, we would not be able to add any kind of definition on there. But that that's great insight, John. Thank you. All right. That's all. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Uh, Judge Boyd, you had a, a question in the chat, and I can't find it. Uh, could you ask it orally? And that, this will be the last one. Okay. Awesome. Um, it was a question slash comment. When uh, mail-in ballots were being cured, I can't tell you the number of people I ran across thought that meant that somebody could go in and change their vote. Um, I don't know if there's any type of information you can get to the public. And some of these are people who were actually running for office. And I'm, I'm telling them, no, the vote isn't changed. It is curing whatever information they did not have to um, verify that they are the person who voted. Is there something that can be done about that? Again, thanks, Judge. That, that's amazing. I mean, we had not heard that. And, and the word cured comes out of the legal document that we've had to use. And yes, the curing, anytime they come in, I mean, we're, we're handing them their sealed ballot that's still in the envelope for them to put the numbers on it on the back. But again, I'm gonna make a note of that, that that's great insight uh, that we had not heard. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Jackie Callahan. We really appreciate your having joined us this morning and provided so much good information and uh, responding to our questions. And uh, let's all give uh, uh, Jackie Collin a, a hand here. I thank you, sir, for this opportunity. And I'm sorry I took so much time, but you all have a no, wonderful no, no, weekend. No, no. It, it, okay, it thank pleasure. you. Thank okay. you, bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to our next item on the agenda, which- Wait, is... excuse me, you, I all don't right. think we voted on the agenda yet. Yes, we did. I did. Okay. I only had maybe, six maybe people you here. No, we, I was here. I only here. saw six people um, in, that had done a check mark. And so I cleared that out because you allowed Jackie to start speaking. Uh, we, but, uh, we, I we, don't, I, it, I mean, there were, I didn't see more than seven people. Most people raised happened. their hand. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's do it again because I have an uh, objection to the uh, agenda because it's incorrect um, where I had uh, asked for an amendment, the information, uh, I just put it in uh, the chat box here. The, and I had sent this out to uh, our membership that, the, uh, that there's a, an amendment to uh, paragraph B, an addition of several, um, uh, several um, uh, motions in there. So can uh, we please re redress the, accept the- uh, Andrew, the, the agenda was approved. As I did submitted. not, I'm sorry, I did not see that. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry that you didn't see it, but it was approved as a submitted and uh, you, were, you were out of order. Uh, so uh, we're going to move on to um, Colt. Is Colt with us? Colt? I am Bob. Okay, fire away, Colt. Sure. Um, I have uh, all of the numbers of uh, what we did uh, in the pre-primary and uh, primary um, part of this last election. Uh, still waiting for the uh, voting numbers to be uploaded into May or for it, the, the election to be certified and get the precinct numbers so that we can then see what the effect of all of this was on the, on the election. But um, I, ha I have done a lot of analysis um, and tracking of uh, what we did, what we spent our money on, and I'm gonna share my screen 
so that y'all can at least follow along and not have to just stare at me, talk about numbers for 15 minutes. Let me see if we can do this here. Can y'all see that spreadsheet? Yes. Yes. Okay. So September 1st uh, to March 1st was about when we did um, all of our contact, 25 weeks um, with the uh, phone and uh, block walking. Uh, we did 27,661 contact uh, attempts. Um, over the 25 weeks, that's 1,106 contacts per week. And um, for the contacts an hour, uh, you can basically use um, 20 because um, for phone banking, you can make about 23 to 25 calls, if not more, an, an hour. And then block walking is, of course, less. It's probably about 15 or maybe less per hour. So averages to 20, but that's 1,383 hours of um, voter contact. Uh, we use Mobilize to track all this stuff. And uh, we had, um, I wanna say about 50 something events um, for our phone banks. We did reoccurring events. So there was multiple shifts in each one, but I wanna say there was about 50 total total events that we had and uh, 661 shifts completed comes out to 1322 hours which is a little bit less than the what was actually done but that makes sense because some people uh, once they got the zoom link they didn't use mobilize or people just showed up to a block walk or something or just made calls uh, on their own without doing that so um, all, all of that um, checked out but uh, yeah a lot of a lot of work put into this this is the numbers for um, the texting phone and walk numbers uh, for these for these rows uh, I broke it into up by precinct but the uh, these five rows are what was done through the vote for a better Texas Texas blue action Democrats effort using our using our van account cutting the turfs, making the phone banks and stuff. And then I also um, tracked the Bear County Democratic Party, um, what, you know, what was done um, without, you know, without our input, but still done in, uh, in Bear County. And um, uh, for the texting, the contact rate for hustle texting has been steadily i would say steadily going down since uh, since 26 i mean since 2020 um we're not the only ones doing it and people are tired of it and i think not answering uh we it was 3.18 percent for us um for blue action democrats we did texting in travis county harris county um, um some other rural counties and um this is good compared to other 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 counties. Um, uh, we still canvassed uh, 8,000 people, but we had to text a lot uh, to, um, to do that. I'm, uh, I'm looking into some different different texting programs and kind of taking a different strategy on this. The, um, the hustle program that we use right now is a P2P system, person to person. It, it simulates a uh, one-on-one -on -one conversation and it's about asking short questions and getting and engaging and like getting people to respond back. And I'm, I'm looking into it more to see about just getting information out there. And um, it's um, different, but uh, we'll see. For the phone, um, phone contact rate was 14.53%, um, not, not, not that bad. Um, the last uh, phone banking that I did was for um, um, Courage in 2021. And I think I think we were at like 12. So that's I guess you could say up a little, but it's a different different kind of election. Um, but yeah, a lot of a uh, lot lot of phone calls for block walking. I was extremely pleased to see um, 
like for the turfs that we that we cut using our scripts and our targeting and everything, our contact rate was 28.56% um, uh, for the doors for the doors that we hit. That in, that included uh, volunteer recruitment. Uh, we did in January. We were reaching out to the infrequent primary voters along with the vote by mail chase. And then that shifted over to um, including more Dems for um, GOTV. So kind of across the, the board there, it was a really, a really great um, um, contact rate. Um, the, I'm just, just a disclaimer, I know a lot of people in uh, uh, a lot of bear precinct chairs did a lot of lit dropping with like sample ballots and letters and stuff like that and weren't knocking on doors. So that, that's why that's low. It's not that it's nothing bad or anything like that. Um, um, yeah, that's, that's the, that's all, all of the, all of the stuff that we did. Um, just to put it into context a little, um, this list right here is the top 20 phone caller or phone or block walkers. This is just combined um, contacts. Uh, these 20 people did 49% of the total voter contact that, uh, that was done. Um, that's a, a, he a heavy load. Um, Jesse, God bless him, um, did so many volunteer. Uh, that, that's this row right here. That's the volunteer recruitment. Um, we, um, we really worked our um, list for, in van doing the texting and then secondary follow-up calls, multiple rounds of it. Um, um, I think we experienced it and I spoke with other groups and campaigns that had the same uh, experience that it's almost like people are just fatigued right now and uh, maybe overwhelmed. And it was, uh, it was, it was definitely, we had to work to uh, get people to, uh, to, tur to turn out, but um, thank, thank God that we have um, 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 these people that did this. Um, just again, to put it in perspective for Kelsey, she just, she, she was the 20th one, 247 contacts. Um, I did the math on that. That's like 1.37 hours of volunteering per week. That's a, a phone, you know, phone banks are two hours, six to eight o'clock. So that's, that's a, a phone bank, a phone bank a week or a block walk a week. Um, there, if, if ever, if everybody, if everybody did that, these numbers would be so much, so much higher. Um, oh yeah. The, uh, for the Bear Blue Action Democrats also paid um, um, some phone bankers to make calls. They ended up doing 26.4% of the calls. Uh, they averaged 23.5 calls an hour. And that's, you know, that's what the call per, uh, call per dollar was. But, um, again, I mean, they, they, they were dedicated to it, doing it every day for three, three or four hours a day. Um, but that's, that's what you can do if you really put the, um, put, put the time into it. Um, um, yeah, that's, um, the, that's, this, this is what it is. This is what, this is what's in van. This is what we, this, this is what we tracked, um, um, for the, uh, for the runoff election, um, come, uh, all, yeah, for the runoff election coming up, um, I, I think I did it right last night for today. It's like nine, nine weeks until, the uh, um, election day. If uh, if everybody in this if everybody in this meeting, I had it at I did the math when it was eighty five. If everybody did an hour a week of block walking or phone banking, that's six hundred and eighty hours of uh, volunteering. That's thirteen thousand six hundred contacts that that we could do. If ha if if only half of us did an hour a week. Or we did, or I guess you could do the same math and say it was half half the uh, thirty minutes. Um, that's sixty eight hundred contacts. You know, Jackie was saying there was um, 
what was it, 25 or 2,800 people whose ballots weren't, weren't cured. Um, that's two weeks of phone calls for us if we want to get it, if we want to get it done, if it's, if it's, if it's really critically important that we get to these people and they need someone to do it, all of us could do it in two weeks. And by the end of April, um, get them on their way um, to uh, um, voting, uh, vote, voting by mail. Um, for the, uh, um, the voters from this year, Van hasn't officially uploaded everybody, and I know ballots are still coming in, but based on the daily masks that, uh, that uh, come out, uh, I, I have about 10,000 people that voted by mail. Um, and if, you, if I do the targeting to include people that voted in Dem pri previous Dem primaries and exclude Republicans, there's like 7,200 um, people on that list, 4,800 phones. That, that targeting can be expanded to include anyone that's eligible to vote by mail. Uh, that's a reliable Dem. That's about 13,000 phones. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying all this now because all of the stuff that we were talking about at the end of Jackie's presentation about the necessity of getting of getting to these people, we can do it. We can totally do it. I could have I could have van lists and scripts ready in a week, and with all with with the with the people here or the uh, you know even I looked Bob sent out that email about uh, um, the people who can vote today. Um, if half of the NEBCD membership did what I said, 21,600 contacts, we could call, we could make two passes through the vote by the vote by mail people and do, G, and do GOTV for the people who voted in the 2022 primary and probably extra people and have more people that, that, that voted or, or just do the contacts sooner and have it done by early voting. Um, it, uh, it doesn't, uh, I know, you know, on, on that, um, uh, on that spreadsheet, you know, Jesse made like 3000 calls, Linda, uh, Maldonado, God bless her did like 1400 or 1300 or something like that. And that's, that's a lot of work. And I am grateful for that and hope, hope everyone strives to do that, but we all don't have to do that in order to get, uh, to get, to get this stuff, um, to get this stuff uh, done, um, um, like I said, uh, when uh, when Van uploads all when the elections are certified and we get everyone that voted and Van uploads that um, to uh, uh, where we can make lists and stuff like that, we we have the capacity to go to everyone, the people who voted who, who voted and it counted, thank them, let them know their vote counted go on to the next door if it's somebody that um, is eligible to vote by mail and um, uh, it's not it's not in there that they voted maybe they're you know maybe they're one of the ones that's on Jackie's list for they weren't able to cure their ballot or something but we would we would be able to do it in a way that didn't slip through the cracks or if we get the, if we get the exact list of the the uh, the people the ballots that weren't cured it would be nothing to make those phone calls. And um, like I said, by the end of the month, we could have them on their way and um, uh, you know, having faith in, the, um, faith in the system again. I think, you know, I per pers personally, I think it's up to us, the people to step up and, and do this. You know, the SB1, they didn't start working on that two weeks before they passed it. They were working on that for years before. And, and, and Jackie's hands are tied in a lot of ways by intention and ours aren't, we can do whatever we want. We can call these people, we can go knock on their door, we can send them texts and stuff like that. And um, uh, all the people whose names were on that list and even the people that uh, weren't on that list but still made some phone calls or some doors from the bottom of my heart, thank you, um, that's, the most important thing that we can do, and um, it's what we need to do in the future. More voter contact equals more votes. In the 2020 
uh, election, you know, our numbers were like 300,000 texts, 150 or 160,000 calls. I think we had like 30,000 doors. That's when we increased turnout. 78% and 94% in the primary and the election. You know, the, the, we don't have the numbers. We don't have the numbers yet for the precincts we worked, but you know, we did a little less voter contact this year compared to that. So it's probably going to be, it's, you know, the turnout is down or less. I, I see it as being directly, directly related and, um, and more than willing to help, to help anyone, uh, that, uh, is uh, ready ready to do the same. Uh, Bear County uh, CEC approved on Tuesday to uh, continue paying Kevin Sittenauer uh, to be the organizer for the Bear County party through the primary, uh, I mean, through the runoff election. Uh, I'm gonna be working with him to uh, uh, keep, doing, keep doing what we were doing and try to do all of this do do all of this stuff um, that we that we need to do. Working with um, precinct chairs, NEBCD volunteers, uh, Bear Blue Action Democrat volunteers, and everyone that uh, um, that we've recruited. You know, we had that Google form that I put out there. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna remain live. Um, we're working. Uh, we're work currently working on uh, rewriting the. Uh, the scripts we did, uh, we came up with the vote by mail one pager during the election and um, um, we're revamping that to include information about the ballot and stuff like that. And uh, uh, then we're gonna be, we're gonna be ready, ready to go. Um, the May, the municipal election is May 7th and then the runoff election is May, is May 24th. It's, it's the, perfect opportunity to do the follow-up for all these vote by mail, uh, of all this vote by mail stuff, because it's, it's, it's current. And then after, after that, um, we're going to decide whether we, you know, whether we work on voter registration, uh, Dem contact. Um, um, I see, I see GOTV for the general starting um, September after the Labor Day, after the Labor Day picnic or the Labor Day picnic is go time. Um, where we need to be block walking and phone banking, um, getting people information. I know uh, we're working, they're working on the literature slash voter guide stuff. So it's all, there's a lot of work to do, a lot of stuff coming together. And the only way we are going to get to where we need to be, which is victorious in November, is together by working, by working together. Um, we know, um, I, I feel like we, we know what we need to do. I know where the voters are. It's just a matter of putting those two together and doing the direct voter contact. So that's that's what we did. That's where we're going. Um, I don't know if there were any questions for me in chat, but I'll be glad to answer whatever. Uh, thanks. Well, we have we have a hand up. We have a couple of hands up. Uh, Sandra. Yeah, I had I put my questions in chat, but um, I, I remember at, on the CEC meeting I asked you for the number of people that were unique uh, uh, volunteer contacts who joined you. Um, one of your goals, or your goal, was to reach out to um, to the volunteers, and that was what the um, the, the texting program was for um, a part of it, probably you didn't use it for everything, but that um, you were looking for people not only in the CEC, but outside the CEC. When I say unique, I mean people that aren't associated uh, with our groups, our party. How many people did you find that um, were, were joining you inside yeah, the county? Through. Inside the county. Oh, yeah. I. Sandy, I, I, I don't have a unique number of new people um, to give you right now, but I can I can say that the 661 shifts that were done, um, the voter contact that was done was mostly not Bear County precinct chairs and not current NEBCD members. It was new. It was new new people that were that were that were that were coming in. Um, that was uh, the list on your um, on your spreadsheet there. 
what list? Oh no, no, that 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 top twenty people that that included some uh, that that was just from the total total contacts. But uh, but but I'm saying the that six hundred and sixty one shifts is, I guess, indicative of the pe the number of people that we did recruit. You know, some people did one or two. Um, a lot, a few people we were able to turn into, you know, super volunteers that were in that, in that top 20 list that operated on, on their own. Um, I worked, you know, the four organizers that Bear County um, hired, um, kind of worked underneath me to do the outreach and management of, of, a, of a lot of a lot of people. I mean, I would feel, I would feel confident I guess in saying that we at least, I mean, we at least recruited, I don't know, 100, 150. I don't, I don't, not, it was, it's not, it wasn't, it, we did not reach our goal of what I wanted to do. But at the same time, I don't know what else we could have done to do the, to, to get people. I mean, we created the capacity. We did thousands of phone calls, hundreds, tens of thousands of texts. We knocked on people's doors. We had training events. I mean, I feel like we maximized Bear County on this uh, on this effort. Thank you very much. Bob right. Como. Yes, sir. Uh, on May 7th, we also had three school board elections in the Northeast ISD within our territory. Uh, there is one uh, very right-wing person on the board now. None of them are exactly flaming liberals, I can tell you, but there's one extremely right-wing candidate, and there are three additional ones who are running, people who we think were recruited by Patrick Von Dolan. And uh, I think at the next NEBCD meeting, we probably ought to have a forum and invite them there and ask them questions about things like banning books or banning uh, uh, in the face of a pandemic, banning masks and things of this nature that some of these people advocate. Um, but I think it also gives us an opportunity then and in the runoff election to fix some of the problems that Jackie and Colt have talked about this morning. In the House District 118 special election a few months ago, uh, after the first election, we found out that there were, I believe, uh, 600 Democrats who had received a ballot by mail who had not returned the ballot by mail. And Colt took upon the responsibility of working that list. And I believe 50% of those people, because of his, his and his team's actions, did vote in the runoff election. So 50% of people who did not vote in the first one voted, there was an increase in the number uh, of people who voted in that election. We narrowly lost it to a Republican. But uh, Colt knows what he's doing. He's very, very disciplined. And, uh, and so I really support the efforts and I appreciate what he and all the people whose names were listed there, appreciate everything that they have done. But with the May 7th, that gives us one more opportunity to fix it before the May 24th runoff. Uh, our numbers, while Democrats are way out voting Republicans in ballots by mail, we're still way behind the numbers that we were in the 2020 presidential election. So we have work to do, uh, uh, and it is something that uh, if we fix it, then our, our task in November will be so much easier than it is right now. So uh, uh, my recommendation to the body would be that we have a screening at the next meeting for Northeast Bear County trustee candidates. Thank you. And good suggestion, uh, Bob, and uh, I think it, it's very worthwhile our, our doing that. And we certainly will consider. All right. Um, and we're going to move on to the uh, business portion of our meeting, um, uh, starting with the approval of the minutes of February 12th, uh, 2022 membership meeting. I will share that with you all, I hope. Right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? 
So moved. All right. I will. Second. Uh, second. A second to approve the minutes. Are there any corrections? You all, you all received this um, uh, together with the email that I sent out. <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes, uh, please so designate by uh, checking the uh, reactions yes box. Waiting for please check your box. Can't find a button to push. It's down on the bottom uh, un, under reaction uh, and the reactions. Uh, click on reactions and you'll see that there's a yes and a no button on other things. Uh, okay. 45 votes in favor. The minutes are approved. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, you know, Put your hands down and uh, thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is the treasurer's report. Brian, you here? Good morning. Good morning. Can you? Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the current balance today's balance is fifty-five thousand nine hundred and nine dollars. Of that. The portion allocated to BBAD is 9,523. And the portion allocated to NEBCD is 46,386. Thank you very much. Uh, any uh, outstanding, uh, any notable expenditures or anything like that, uh, Brian? Uh, no, no, nothing significant. Nothing significant. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape. Um, all right, I'm gonna move on to committee reports, uh, budget and finance. Um, uh, I, I prepared a, um, a notional budget number here, which I, I believe I sent to everybody, but our, Ongoing monthly expenses run about three hundred eighty dollars uh, most most of the year. Um, a little a little less uh, in uh, campaign years. Our annual expenses are, are as you'll see on your screen. I'm sorry, media. Uh, I'm not sharing. Them. All right. Here that would be. Okay. So, um, it looks like after we've taken care of all of our uh, normal expenses and so on that for the, uh, the campaign will have roughly in the, the range of $28,000 uh, to spend on campaign expenses. Uh, not including the campaign office, which will uh, run it. Um, they'll be about, about, we think, Somewhere between fifteen and eighteen thousand dollars for rent, and uh, the other numbers that you see there uh, for for those expenses. So we're we're in pretty good shape, pretty good shape. And the reason we're in pretty good shape is that we've had a really good uh, response to our fundraisers, uh, better than than ever, as a matter of fact. Uh, so um, our 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 budget situation is is. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, campaign and candidate recruitment. Ian? 
And there I am. Let me unmute. Okay. Now, I think Colt already said the important parts. Okay, great. All right. Um, communication. Uh, Sandra Thompson and Martha Spinks. Communication. Yeah, we did have um, a, a great many uh, people watch our video on YouTube. The last I looked, it was uh, about 100 uh, uh, views and uh, watched pretty much all the way through. So uh, thank you very much for all the judges for submitting their um, uh, their videos to us. It, it, I, I felt like, you know, even though it was a lot of work, it was pretty successful. Thank you. Uh, events On the, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Martha, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, on the website, we're getting a, a very steady uptick of participation. And uh, in the last um, about 60 days, we've had 43 new people come to the website and subscribe, which means that they want to uh, receive notices from us, may or may not be members. Uh, but that's very encouraging. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that on the website, on the navigator bar, we have a, a tab called vote. And we've tried to accumulate a compendium of information there about registering, voting, and uh, other things that you can do uh, to encourage people to get out the vote. We also included a marked up ballot this time uh, for the most recent election. So please use that as a resource when you need material uh, to talk to people. Great. Thank you so much. I sent it out to uh, my uh, folks here in, in the precinct, uh, and it was uh, it was well received. So um, that's that's a that's a, something we should do for the future. Uh, events and fundraising. Mary Angie and Ann. Uh, Jamie, go ahead. Okay. Are we uh, yeah. so? Hold I'm sorry. On, Anne, that there was a question from, from Jamie. Yeah, I just had a question for Martha. Um, is it possible to put a page on the NEBCD website that highlights the relationship between BBAD and the work that we're doing in the field together? Anything is possible. What kind of content do you want? We'll discuss it on the board and put it together. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because I'd also like to see a I don't know if there's a way to um, funnel. I mean, is there is there a way that the volunteers who are signing up are funneling over to Cult so that we have those in our pool? Uh, ask that question another way. I'm not sure what you're asking. Do we have a call to action for people who are coming to the site? Would you like to volunteer? Would you like to help? And if so, if we're collecting that information, is that being shared with Colt? We don't have anything right now that uh, says specifically to volunteer for any particular thing, but we do have a page that has a list of activist groups and links so that they, and that includes BBAD, uh, so that you can contact them if you want to volunteer. And there's a brief description there that explains what's involved with those organizations. Well, my point is more, um, I guess, directed because BBAD is an EBCD. Um, you know, uh, no. <laughs> by, by, by legal terms, I mean, because we're, we are um, uh, MOU related and it's a function of NEBCD that it should be more prominent and that we should have information about our activities so we can support uh, Colt and the street team with what they're doing. So that's, that's really where my, my questions are coming from. Thanks. Sure. Just draft what you want, bring it to the board. The board will decide what to put on the page. Oh, there you go. We're back. Bob Como. Bob Como. Uh, let's have the report of the uh, fundraising committee first, and then I'll, I have a comment or two. Go ahead. Uh, are we on events and fundraising? Yeah, events and fundraising. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so you know the 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 committee had to uh, be quick on their feet to create our event. And it was a successful event, all things considered. And um, I mean, actually it was a successful event 
no matter what. But uh, I mean, we did have a few little bumps. I'm concerned about uh, one of our someone who submitted his uh, his uh, uh, what do you call it donation, and we were we overlooked uh, his his I don't know his, uh, getting his picture. And so I, or move, let's see, yeah, his picture. And so uh, that was, uh, like I said, it was a, um, a, a uh, bump that we need to look at and uh, try to resolve. Okay. Uh, anything else, Ann? No, I, that's, uh, that's it. Can you okay. think of anything, Madeline? Uh, Madeline had to leave. So. Oh, okay, she left. Yeah, she had a meeting. I That's left. right. She had an opera. <laughs> okay, government action and monitoring. Well, Can I, I have a question. Job, come on. Oh, go, go ahead, Dan. Uh, how many of these were sent out? Uh, Eleven hundred. And to whom were they? To whom were they sent out? They were sent out to our mailing list, which consists of uh, the membership, uh, the precinct chairs who are not members, uh, people who have attended our events in the past, uh, uh, elected officers and candidates. Well, the one thing, the recommendation for future events like this, when we send it out, it seems like in the center fold, there ought to be a detachable list of who our endorsed candidates are because we went through all the process of interviewing candidates and making recommendations for them and then send out to 1100 people and we don't even share with members who weren't present at that who those um, who those endorsed candidates were and two of the uh, people that we endorsed uh, could have used those extra votes perhaps so that's just a few uh, re recommendations for the future. Thanks to the people who put this together. Appreciate your work. That's just a, a, a future idea. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, government action and monitoring. Uh, Martha, for the time being, anyway. Yes. Uh, well, I would say the government action certainly has to be voting based on everything that we've seen today. Um, uh, Ian suggested that we project some kind of message about not letting the Republicans steal our vote. And I volunteered to draft something on that. So if anybody's interested in providing any input, I'd really appreciate it. I think it could be something significant. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see some uh, comments in the chat uh, about the, uh, the book arriving after the election. Um, we. We put this uh, together uh, late in the game because we changed over from uh, an in-person to a, um, a virtual event with the uh, printed program uh, to be uh, so, sort of our main contact with, uh, with the voters. Um, we went to press uh, late because our, the submissions that we got were late. Uh, the, the printer had a a uh, technical issue was unable to print um, on the schedule that, that we had foreseen and that had, we had, that had been promised. Um, and so everything was delayed, delayed, delayed. And uh, so uh, at the best, people were getting uh, their, their booklets on uh, Friday or Saturday before the election. And some of them, unfortunately, because of the way uh, we, we mailed them out that arrived after the election. Sorry about that. We will try to do better uh, in the future, um, but we, as a, as we, we really had to uh, make major changes to, to how we were doing the promotion because of the our our un, unwillingness to expose people to uh, uh, COVID infection uh, at, a, at an in person uh, event. But uh, thanks so much for for all the support. We, we had lots of support for the event uh, from candidates and members of, of the of US of NDCD. Much appreciated. Okay, uh, membership, uh, Mabel.
Mabel, you there? Unmute. Okay, I'm here. Uh, I've sent uh, the numbers on chat, and as of today, nine o'clock, it's uh, 392 minus 108 who are lapsed for a, tra uh, for a total of 284. And if any, everybody could see how many people are here at the meeting, there's not 284, unfortunately. So uh, that's that's why uh, uh, things are done the way they're done. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mabel. Uh, precinct organization, John. Hi, everybody. Thank you all for being here this morning. Um, we swore in. Uh, Three, I will, we, we advanced three new precinct chairs and one coordinator in the CEC meeting this week. Um, and um, looking into the uh, the people who have re-upped for the new term, I believe Rosemary, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 214 people, uh, which just means we're about a hundred people dropped out of being precinct chair and decided not to renew. And so we need to build our numbers back up. Uh, I think the highest that we've been since I've been part of this was about 350. So we've got some, we've got some room to go. Um, and also, I just want to let everybody know that we've got some really, really good training programs for precinct chairs, and so many of them don't take advantage of it. But if you're any precinct chair out there, you know, there's stuff to be done all year long. You, your job is a, a year-round job, contacting voters, not just during election times. And so I would encourage you to, to come to classes. I'm going to put the, uh, the link to sign up for classes in the chat. I uh, just want to get through talking, but come to class, uh, see what we're all about. Uh, some of these new people we've got in are out there working their precinct this weekend. They're knocking on doors and they're talking to uh, people that they're trying to just ID who they are. They're trying to talk. They're talking to low propensity Democratic voters and they're talking to the triple Dems as well as the uh, the seniors for vote by mail. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, precinct chairs need to be out there working all year long. So come to class and we'll be happy to to get you hooked into what you need to do. The last thing I want to talk about is about vote by mail. Uh, as I said earlier, we have new instructions for voting by mail. Uh, and um, we have a little slogan, Barbara Baruch, I'm stealing this from you. Um, it's called Don't Get Flapped. Don't Get Flapped. And what that's all about is uh, you got to open the flap and you got to put your ID numbers on it, all you people voting by mail. And so this is kind of like, like a little campaign that we're going to run and uh, push out through our precinct chairs. Don't get flapped. Fill in both ID numbers and uh, hopefully your ballot will get accepted. So um, any questions anybody has? I'm looking around here, see nobody has their hand up. Okay, well, somebody has a question, just stick it in chat. And, and like I said earlier, I'm going to put the uh, the link to sign up for uh, precinct chair training classes in the chat as well. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank John. You, John. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, okay, we're going to uh, unfinished business. And the first item of unfinished business is report of the nominations committee for officer uh, and committee co-chair elections. And uh, I will share that with you. I can't find it, but uh, you all received the, um, uh, the the report in the um, uh, email that I sent you. I, um, what are you looking for, Bob? Are you uh, looking for the agenda? Committee uh, report. Committee report? Yeah. I don't know. Bob, I've I've got it up. If you want to co-host me, I can put it up on. Yeah, screen. I'll, put, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, You can just sh screen share. You don't need to co-host. Okay, let's give that a try then. <clears throat> can you see it? No. Okay. All right. Making hmm. a co-host. Not up there yet. Yeah. 
Let me try it again. Well, Robert, will you make him a co host? Maybe that's what the problem is. Yeah, I didn't, didn't realize that you had to be. Ian, did you click the little green button at the bottom? There we are. Uh, thank you, Brian. This is Brian Jarvis. And Brian Jarvis put it up. Okay. Could you, uh, right. could you zoom in there? Yeah, I, 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 I screen shared it. So will you will you zoom into the document or okay. uh, you know, kind of small. Bring it. How's that? Is that better, 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 better. better. Okay. So, um, yeah, nobody got I don't remember seeing this. Okay. The uh, this is the report of the um, uh, of the nominating committee and uh, the first uh, uh, position for which we will be voting uh, this uh, morning uh, is that of uh, chair of the NABCD uh, to uh, replace uh, 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 Zach Like, who had to resign because of New, of, his, of his new position with the city government. Uh, so um, we have two candidates, uh, Martha Spinks and Christy Villanueva. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each of the two candidates to speak to you for uh, two minutes. Uh, thereafter, there, there will be opportunity for uh, uh, supporters of the two candidates to speak for one minute each or to ask a question as the case may be. Uh, and then we will proceed uh, to the vote and the vote will be uh, restricted uh, to uh, members of any BCD who have been members for 28 days uh, or more uh, and who are current on their dues. Okay, so we're gonna start with Martha Spinks who will be uh, have two minutes, Martha. Okay, Bob, could you take down the uh, yeah? We'll take it down. Agenda. Oh, I, I can't take it down. Uh, Brian, could you take it down? Yeah, let me. Um... And will you share it in chat? Yeah. The the reason I'm asking you to do that is so I can bring up some notes. Okay. The, for me to look at. Right. Okay, yeah. Right, can you stop the share? I'm, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Oh, here we go, here we go. I, I had to find the, the I had to find okay. it allowed me to do that. Do you, Thank you. Okay, do you want me to put it in the chat, you said? Yeah, put it in the <clears throat> chat, Brian. Okay. Good. Go ahead, Martha. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I've made a career of leadership as an army officer and the CEO of nonprofit organizations. I've been a precinct chair and a community organizer. I've been an NEBCD member for five years and on its board of directors for three. I listen and I collaborate. If NEBCD wants to attract younger people or improve its performance, we have to start with a strategic plan, set goals and get everyone on board. We need to connect with the other democratic clubs and get out of our silos. If you elect me, I'll immediately start working with you on that. Now, I'd like to address my two opponents in this race. The first opponent is Christy Villanueva. I like Christy. I think she could really contribute to NEBCD, but here's the deal. The nominating committee said they wanted a chair who could get it going 500 miles an hour this year and be at peak performance for the midterm elections. I'm not sure anybody could do that, but I'd say it would be a lot harder for somebody who's never been involved at the club because it takes time to understand how an organization works and reach consensus. Now I'd like to address my second opponent, the person who nominated Christy, Jamie Eikhoff. 
She's been telling folks I shouldn't vote for me because I don't value Be Bad and would defund them. Here are the facts. Be Bad and NEBCD are two separate organizations. Be Bad asked NEBCD for thousands of dollars that all of us raise through our dues and hard work fundraising. I am one member of a board of directors that asked Be Bad to sign an MOU for the money and Jamie didn't want to agree to it, but she finally did because several members of our board said there was no money without it. If I'm elected chair, I'll still be one member of the board that collectively makes funding decisions. So the most important question for you to answer today may not be whether I should be club chair. It may be whether Jamie should be elected co-chair to the Budget and Finance Committee. I think it's a conflict of interest. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, any uh, statements and support or questions for, for Martha? Uh, yes, um, so uh, I've been working with Martha for the last year, and I'm really eternally grateful that um, she's brought her talent and her skills to NEBCD. We have a really wonderful new website, logos. Um, she um, is fabulous with organizing. She does not assume anything. You cannot, um, you know, have a conversation with her and where she will make any assumptions because she's trained not to. Um, uh, she's very organized and thoughtful, and I think she really has uh, uh, an outreach into the state and uh, to. Uh, bring about our awareness of the things that need to be changed and worked on. And I believe that uh, she'd make a, a valuable asset to Northeast Bear County Democrats. As a chair. I think Paul Furukawa may be raising his hand. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I've known Martha Spinks for th over three decades since we were teenagers. Uh, Martha uh, and I were military social workers. Uh, Martha worked with uh, my late wife, Kathy, to help launch the uh, powerful military family programs uh, a number of years ago. Uh, several summers ago, I, I was a paid volunteer at ACOG and had a chance to work as part of Martha's team. She was the executive. She engendered great morale and great leadership. Martha was the one who started the Los Chiladas Democrats Saturday mornings. What a great way to stimulate your brain and your stomach. And you ran across some neat folks like John Courage. Uh, Martha is serving on two Northeast uh, committees. Uh, where does she have the energy? I think we will thrive with Martha as our chair. Thank you. Can I speak? I think the next person is um, uh, uh, Ms. DeHoyas. Are you speaking for uh, in yes. support? Yes, I'd like to ask the question. Uh, no, are you speaking in support of the of the candidate? Oh, I thought we could ask questions. No. Okay, thank you. Um, so yes, um, it is question time. That's the purpose. Uh, go ahead, and, um, uh, Ms. DeHoyas. Go ahead and, and ask a question. Um, I, I I'm kind of sort of torn um, because I I seem to. Uh, to sense, I've been a member of uh, Northeast Bear County Democratic Party and and the Bear County Democratic Party for um, I guess since I I started with the party several years ago, and I I tend to see that there's some kind of sort of dissension, and it, and it's really really the first time I've seen it with Northeast Bear County Democratic Party. They have been our strongest. Um, 
party for such a long time. My question is, is uh, Martha, you were, I thought you were one of the founding members of BBAT. Are you no longer with BBAT? And is there a problem um, why you're not? Uh, it seems like you're not supporting Be Bad, and and I, I've seen so much, so good that they've done in Precinct Three, which I was a member of Precinct Three, and I helped a lot with that. Uh, I have a question for you, Martha. I, I respect you as a person, but I, I want to find out what's going on. Thank you. Well, uh, tell me why you think I don't support Be Bad. No, I'm asking you. Did you did you uh, did you uh, quit Be Bad or? It seems like uh, there there's wants to be a separation of be bad, uh, and they are such a strong organization. Is that correct? No, uh, you know I emphasize that I'm just one board member at NEBCD, uh, so please don't give me credit for driving this driving this relationship. Uh, we have fiduciary responsibility for what we do with the money. Uh, NEBCD and BBAD are not one organization. BBAD is a recipient of funding from NEBCD, and we have a responsibility to ask them to account for their funding, which is what we've done. That's been defined as a lack of support. I think it's uh, an important part of our responsibility. And you must keep in mind that it, this, in you know, the last several months, BBAD has received at least $15,000 from the board. And I was on the board and I voted for it, but I did ask them to be accountable. That's not being opposed to anybody. That's asking for accountability and doing my job on the board to be sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do with everybody's money. Thank you. Um, which uh, we'll hear from Jamie Eikoff now. Yes, I'd like to address um, just simply the the comments that Martha made about the nomination process. Um, I was on a committee of six people with, along with Martha. Um, we were asked by Bob to uh, start making calls probably about three weeks ago as a committee. And basically we called about 15 different people within the organization um, who all said no. And we couldn't get anybody to volunteer to be the chairperson. And we had our first meeting. And so I, I, I actually have known Christy Villanueva for quite some time and you know, simply asked her and she said, you know, she'd been looking for something to um, exercise her, her talents and skills. And so seriously checked with Bob to see that that could happen from an outside point of view because we had no one from this organization who volunteered. And so, um, Brought, you know, brought Christy to the table. I did not, I did not nominate her. This nominations committee nominated her, and I brought her to the table on Tuesday. Martha did not object. Um, we went to a meeting and made more, a couple more phone calls to clarify with some other people to see if they were would be, uh, con you know, interested. They all said no. And on Saturday at three o'clock on the afternoon, Martha finally raised her hand and said, "I'm interested." So, you know, I think it's a bit unfair to say that I somehow um, am doing something surreptitious to this organization. I love NEBCD. I've been a member for five years, and I also um, have worked very closely on the finances for BBED. So, and I work with Brian Jarvis because our funds are not commingled, and NEBC funds are never deposited into the BBED account. These this expenses that Martha speaks of are paid for by. Can you, can you address um, a question uh, to the candidate and um, and not uh, give us a Sandra, dive? Please back. don't interrupt me. I'm I, I was mentioned uh, in Martha's is, intro is, as some sort of competitor. Just ask a question, Mandy, or move Mandy, on. Mandy, please. Um, so I'm about to wrap up my comments because I, I was mentioned in Martha's intro comments. I think it's very valid for me to respond to those. Um, I just want to remind everybody that the nominations were made by the nominations committee of six people and not myself. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Como. I'm in line to speak after Christy speaks, please. I don't have her as somebody whose hand is raised. Um, After she speaks for her nomination. 
Okay. All right. Then um, David Cruz. Am I allowed to make a statement on behalf of Martha? You are. I have known Martha for over a decade and I worked with her uh, at, at uh, ACOG and I found her to be a very trustworthy and loyal and effective manager at that, at that office. Um, she, was, she was just really so good at getting things done and working with people. And I just found her a really stand up individual and I really hope everybody could support her as, as, our, um, as our new president. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut this off because we, the, the 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 morning is well, you know, going on and on. Well, uh, and, someone uh, had so really spoke over her uh, over time. I so hear from uh, Christy Villanueva at this time, Christy. Christy. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you, Robert, for that. And wow. I mean, <laughs> what a morning. So thank you everyone for allowing me to be here. I know that a number of opinions as to how I became associated with this group and became a nominee for this chair are, are in question. But I wanna assure you that I am a community volunteer. I've done a lot of activities just because it has not been here does not mean that it has not been effective out in the community. So I did make sure to reconfirm that it was a nomination committee that was bringing me in and they seem to have made a significant effort to rally members. I'm really disappointed that no one else stepped forward. And something like this is not out of the ordinary. I believe a few years ago, you all went out outside of this group to bring someone else in if the information I received was correct. And that did not go well. And I'm sorry for that. Uh, but as a community leader, as a president and CEO of a nonprofit, as a small business owner, I can tell you I understand how organizations work and what it means to build out organizations and rally everyone together. I'm not here to bicker and nor am I here to get involved in, in any of this stuff. I, instead, I, I'm gonna applaud the nomination committee for thinking outside the box and trying to build out a legacy for this organization. This is what's important instead of being stagnant. There are a lot of changes that are going, out, going on in our community and we need to make sure to stay active NABCD has been on the forefront of so many things and you all are extremely strong, but the, from what I can see as an outsider and I'll recognize myself as an outsider, the recruitment isn't there, the next generation, there are a lot of things that also need to be done in conjunction with the hard work that you're putting in today. So at the end of the day, this is about electing a chair who's going to bring the membership together along with working in tandem with other organizations, finding a leader who can effectively build the strategy of recruitment, fundraising, and build out the organization along with policy support. This is what I feel is a big priority here. I hope you all read my email that I sent out. If you didn't have a chance to read it, I would be happy to resend it to you. I will put my email, my phone number in the chat, and I'm happy to have a conversation with you, even if I don't get elected. You know, I, I'm just, I'm here to offer my services to NEBCD. And I also wanna say that I had a chance to speak with Martha and we had a very pleasant conversation. And she is somebody that I would be happy to work with, regardless if she is the chair or not. So I offer myself to all of you. I am an open book. There out of the 200 and some odd members of this organization, there are about 80 that I know personally and have worked with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, you can look at any one of my pages um, online. You can call those folks. I've been on the VIA board. I've been on several other organizations. Just I'm here to serve. And I hope you all will take into consideration 
what is important for any BCD and not what's going on internally. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, okay, uh, questions, comments, uh, statements. Uh, Linda Como. Yes, good morning and now good afternoon. Good With respect and thanks to the great leadership we've had and the legacy of our organization, in determining the chair of this organization, it is not enough to rest on the laurels and the legacy. We need to do more, more energy for voter registration, more motivation for GOTV, more growth for our membership and volunteers, more encouragement, more organization of precincts, and more unity after primaries. We need leadership from strength and growth and inclusion beyond what we've had before. It's not about where we have been. It's about where we are going. We need fresh, positive perspective. And I urge your support for Christy Villanueva for chair of NEBCD. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Valleyseo. Unmute, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just recently became a member and I probably don't have a vote here, but uh, I agree with some of the comments that have been made, but I have a question for Christy here. Christy, I am the former Texas Democratic Party Hispanic Caucus State Representative and the chair of the Bear County Tejano Democrats. My, I guess as a dual question is, how long have you been a member of Northeast uh, Bear County Democrats? I just recently joined, Peter. Okay. Uh, and I know I've known the Northeast Bear County Democrats since uh, 1997, and I followed this organization quite closely. My mm -hmm. second question is, well, what is your perception or what is your position on extending the efforts of the Northeast Bear County Democrats to extend to other organizations such as the Bear County Tejano Democrats? Because personally, I've never heard of you. You've never heard of me personally, Peter? Is that what you yes. said? Yes, I've okay. been involved in politics as long as I have for more than 20 something years. I've, I've never heard your name. So my question, second question is, how, what is your position on outreaching towards other organizations such as the Bear County Tejano Democrats? Okay, understood. So I think it's very important to reach out to other nonprofit organizations, to the Tejano Democrats and to others. I think we all need to band together and that needs to be a big priority in order to push the message forward. We've got to get out there. And I'm sorry that you haven't heard of me. I did run as a district two city council candidate. I live on the east side. I do a lot of work on the east side. I have also done significant work on the west side as the president of the West San Antonio Chamber. I was a member of multiple organizations on the west side. I initi initiated a safety effort with Sheriff Salazar for four years on active shooter training and a number of other safety efforts. I've led several discussions and helped with the 1A cent sales tax for VIA. Uh, I was the one that brought that to the board while I was serving. And so I know that a lot of you don't know me and you don't know the work that you did that I've done. I did state that on my email. I highlighted quite a few things. I'm a strong Democrat and you know, I hope to get to know you all, but I do think that we need to come together, all of us, all of the organizations and make a bigger concerted effort to get the vote out. So we do have more similarities uh, than not. Thank you. Great. Uh, uh, Dave Kaufman. Question for Christy, you're obviously very qualified but my question is, if you're not successful in this election as president, how will you contribute to our organization in the future? And then I have one other comment I want to ask the chair. I have an appointment in Bernie that I'm going to have to leave for. Can I put my vote in the chat? Uh, no, the, the bylaws don't, don't allow that, unfortunately. I had a couple okay, of other questions similar. Uh, what about proxy, proxy voting? Huh? We don't do yeah. proxy voting either, right? No. Sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, so I'll answer. 
Oh, yeah. I'll answer that question very quickly. So, David, I do plan to talk to Robert and to some of the others on the board to see where my skills can be best utilized. And then I'll focus in on that. So if they recommend that I join a particular committee or do some other sort of work, then I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Um, I said we were gonna limit to two and I think we've already done three, but Bob, you always make useful uh, interventions. What you got to say? Well, first of all, I wanted to congratulate and thank Bob Miller for all that he has done for so many years for this organization. And whoever the new chair is, I will give them my, my most support as I have always tried to do. Uh, that said, I am very, very proud to support Christy Villanueva for this position. I had the opportunity to serve with her for several years uh, on the VIA board and the leadership that she brought to that board. You know, I, here as a union guy, and she coming in as the chair of the uh, West Side Chamber of Commerce, I had a little apprehension, but I found out that her chamber was very, very progressive in terms of, uh, uh, of being uh, diverse, being progressive, being in environmentally friendly, uh, and, and her leadership on that board uh, told me that she's the kind of leader that, that would really be very, very helpful to us at this particular point. Um, she brought people together, as she mentioned, the, uh, the work with the sheriff, but there were some other training sessions that I had the opportunity to attend that she put together for West Side Chamber leaders, uh, where issues of the day were discussed and, and, uh, and brought to their attention so that they could be uh, informed citizens. Uh, I think that's the kind of, of uh, leadership that we're going to need and will be very, very helpful to this organization. Uh, and I think that her vision and her energy would be very, very helpful. One other thing I'd like to point out is that back at Labor Day, we, we gave kudos and gave a, a first ever award, a profiling in courage award to a young man named Donovan Rodriguez, who is the chief of staff to state representative Ray Lopez. And he had the temerity to stand up to, to Governor Abbott and sue him because they were, they were uh, defunding basically the legislative staff. And this young man uh, had the uh, audacity to stand up and, and, uh, and stand up to the governor. Uh, Donovan Rodriguez happens to be the son of Christy Villanueva. And I think that uh, seeing, seeing how um, her own children have, uh, have learned from her and the, the apple doesn't far, fall far from the tree. So for all those things, uh, I am very, very happy and proud to uh, support Christy Villanueva for this position. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Um, I think we are ready to proceed to a vote and the vote will be- We're gonna do it to by do polling, poll right? Here. You're gonna make a poll? Hey, this is Gina. I just have a quick question. How are we sure that it's only the members? Because this was open to everybody, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, we, however, we have monitors. Uh, oh, gotcha. Who okay. I have appointed uh, to make sure that, that only. Uh... Thank you, Bob. Uh, okay. Uh, this is not something I want to do. <laughs> just really too complicated. Uh, so I'm not going to create it. We're going to go with a, a, a yes vote uh, from the reactions. Uh, so. Uh, um, excuse me, Bob. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Excuse me, Bob. This is Nicolette. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Nicolette. Um, um, I'm actually here with Becca Moyer de Felice. So we're, we will both, we're like right next to each other here. I can Hi. turn on my camera. We are here. Um, so we will, we will go ahead and can we, uh, Submit as two separate votes. Uh, uh, or should yeah, I log in as well? Yeah. Would you like her to log in separately? You you would need to log in separately. I'm, okay. I'm okay. afraid. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll okay. hold on for a second. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate you. I have a question. Yes. 
Um, so some people only have their first name, first name and middle initial. Uh, I mean, how do we know who they are? Uh, I'm going to, ask, okay, good question. I'm going to ask that those of you who have only put in a, 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 a first name or, or first name and middle initial to um, rename yourselves. That is, you will uh, go to where you are on the participants list, uh, click on the more, and then rename yourself to your full name. That's the only way we can be uh, sure uh, of um, uh, the, uh, the exact identity of the individual. And I know, I know it sounds sort of conspiratorial, but do you think we should turn on our cameras? Yes, and, and do yeah, and do turn on your camera, please. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Hansen, you, you tried to sign in on two separate... Devices. Uh, 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 two, two separate devices. Okay, I'm only on one now, though, correct? Okay, it, well, it's it's because I, I got... I got okay. accidentally. I would only me. allow one for an, I couldn't okay. tell whether or not the other one was a real or not. Right. Like, okay. I'm in the so we have a couple of questions here. Veronica Gonzalez. Yeah, just a suggestion. I know when we have the membership meetings for the endorsement forums, we didn't um we kind of kicked out those that were not voting members. Uh we're not gonna well, do that. It would not be appropriate for us to do that in this instance. Uh, uh, no, because, you know, I, I just don't, wouldn't think that that's fair. That's why we wanted to do it by poll. Was so that, we do it during the endorsement forum. So why wouldn't we do it here? Uh, it it, just it turned out to be kind of a, a mess. We're not <laughs> As a matter of fact, a lot of okay. people who wanted to vote, I couldn't get in. It was, it, so that's why I decided not to do it that way this, at this time. Um, okay, just, just, okay, thanks. Uh, William B. Unmute one. No, I, I really don't have anything to say, Bob. I'm trying to, I heard your instructions about how to change my name, but I'm putting in chat when you see William's phone, I'm William B. Johnson. I thought that uh -huh. might clarify the potential. Yeah, that, that, that does it. That takes care of it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Burrock. Hi. I think. I really believe I was a member before yesterday, but just to make sure that I could come to this meeting, I paid my dues yesterday again. So can you confirm that I'm eligible to vote? I, I had you as one of the ineligible people, as a matter okay. of fact, because so, you, you had, been, had not been a member for over a year, and our uh, standing rules uh, say that a person is a new member if they have not been a paid member for over a year. Uh, so um, um, yes, we, we, we are delighted to have you as a member now, but, but you're vote. ineligible to vote. Thank right. you. Bob Richard Miles. Yes. Can you confirm my current membership? Hold on. Uh, yes, I, I, I saw your name and uh, <laughs> I, I, I know, I, I remember that you are a current member, yes. Thanks much. Does that mean that one of the uh, candidates is not eligible to vote? Vote for herself. That is exactly right. Thank you. Can we move to a vote, please? Okay, let's move to a vote. All right, we're going to go with re through the reactions. Okay, all those in favor of Martha Spinks, please mark uh, mark your yes button, the green button in the reaction area. I'm sorry, but I don't have that on my uh, on my Zoom. I, I was trying to identify myself, but uh, this is Judge Saldana. I wanted to be able yes, to vote, yes. but I don't have that option. I don't know, do I need to leave and you come back? You don't have out? the reactions on the bottom of your uh, of your screen? I, let me go all the way down. I did before. All the way down to the bottom of the screen. All it says is invite. Did I just not come in totally? Is that what that means? Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to click it. Well, I'll be back if I get wrong. Yeah. We'll take on the we'll, bottom of your screen. Let's just raise your hand if you if you can. Or, or raise your well, hand. It, it doesn't give me that option. That's my you, problem. I think you're in the I think you're in the participants thing. You want to go oh. down to the bottom and go to the reaction. Smiley face. Okay, so it says send email, send message, or copy 
invite link. Is that what I need to do? No, Copy no, you're in, I think you're in, you've got to go to the bottom. It should say participants, chat, share screen, record, reactions, yeah. smiley yeah. face with the plus. That's when no. you want to click on. It's not okay. giving me any of that. It just no. says participants 90. It says close oh, and press, invite. Huh? That's <laughs> all. Oh, <laughs> wait, I see maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'm, maybe I can. Uh, oh, Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. Let's <laughs> move on to questions. Oh, Gloria. Gloria, can you go to more on the right hand side, all the way and on the, the right? Uh, uh, you know what? I, I, uh, when I went down to the bottom, it also opened another screen, says Zoom oh. meeting invite. Let me go there. Oh, I maybe can video. No, it's, a, it's a more. Are, are you on a phone? Uh, I'm on Miss Gloria. On iPhone. Yes, Miss Gloria, can oh. you just do a thumbs up? Will Will they? Well, Northeast Bear County no, Democrats. No, it doesn't can, give can me do any options. A, 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 okay, a, let me see. A, I, I think maybe I can send you an email. Okay, um, I vote for Miss Wood. Wait a minute, I'm trying to vote too, but where do I see it in more? No, it's not on more. It is on the bottom of your, your screen under your, you know, under under the people. Okay. There's I, I think something called reaction. I think you got my my uh, vote on chat. I see it on the chat now. Okay. All right. So we will. But I can't see the reactions. All right. <laughs> send it. Send it to chat yeah. then, uh, Jim. So that I, I I am seeing two hands up and plus. 29 uh, ladies uh, defense class. Okay, for Martha, thanks. Uh, plus one vote in chat. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was at a ladies defense class. She was uh, running around. Hi. Hello. We're doing human trafficking. They're doing human trafficking. Okay. Uh, Lucy, could you please mute? Women's self defense class. She wanted to come beat me up. Mute yourself. I don't want to hear about human trafficking. You can mute them up. Mute yourself. All right. Come on. I lost the whole screen. We have 29. I lost the whole screen. One plus one. 31 votes for Martha Spinks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to. Erase 31 uh, votes. 31 votes. All right. Now for Christy Villanueva, if you support Christy Villanueva, raise a hand or vote the green button. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I need to clear the. the um, I already cleared it. You did it? Okay. All right. I'm okay, going to do it have, one more time. Okay. I'm going to clear all the feedback. Could y'all vote again? Yeah, please vote again. In favor of Christy Villanueva. This is Sarah Aranda, Precinct Chair 3096. Just in case it gets cleared again, please, I'm voting for Christy Villanueva. Okay. Now we Thank are. Thank you. All right. We have three hands up and 34. 34. Uh, yes, vote. Uh, okay. Are we going to make sure that everybody that's voting is um, is clear to vote? Yeah. Uh, and, and didn't vote before. I am checking. Can we vote twice? No, sorry. <laughs> I've seen to lose everything. Sorry. Okay. Okay. For some reason, my check was taken off. I put up my hand this time. All right. So, um, so we have. All right. I checked the. Um, the votes and they are valid. Uh, so there are four hands up and plus 35 uh, yes votes for Christy Villanueva. Um, Christy Villanueva is I, the elected chair. Okay. I had uh, uh, someone contact me saying that their, uh, their computer 
um, their internet uh, conked out uh, during her, her vote for, um, uh, for Martha. For Martha. So um, I just add another vote for okay, them. So that would be, it's not going to make any difference. So that would be, I'm going to put that as a chat vote. And uh, oh, wait, there were three three votes in the chat, Audrey. There were there were there was one vote in the chat, two hands up, twenty nine uh, uh, green marks for Martha Spinks for a total of thirty three, uh, four hands up and thirty five green marks for Christy Villanueva. Christy Villanueva is elected. There there are actually five hands up. Oh, oh there oh now there are five. There were four the last time I looked. Five hands up. So so that would be forty votes. All right. Okay. Uh, Christy Villanueva is is elected. All right. Uh, could you read the total votes for each, please, just yes. for the record? Uh, the total votes for Martha Spinks, uh, two hands up, twenty nine green marks, and two chat uh, votes for a total of thirty thirty three. Christy Villanueva, five hands up, thirty five. Uh, Green, green checks for a total of 40, 40 votes. Say that again. I'm sorry. Someone was commenting. <laughs> five Just hands the total. Up. Just so the total. Five hands up, 35 green marks for a total of 40. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations, Christy. Congratulations, Thank you, everyone. Christy. And thank you, Martha. All right. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on because it is getting late. Uh, okay, so the next item on the agenda uh, would be the election of uh, the budget members of the Budget and Finance Committee, of uh, whom there are two candidates, uh, uh, moi uh, and, uh, and Jamie Eikhoff. Uh, are there any... Uh, are there any uh, uh, nominations from the floor or self-nomination? Nominations from the floor or self-nomination? Is, is this nomination uh, for anyone, any position? Uh, for Budget and Finance Committee co-chair. Oh, sorry, okay. Sandra? Oh, I'd like to nominate Jamie. Uh, Jamie is he's already been nominated. nominated. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, I I have to vehemently object to um, to the nomination of Jamie Eikhoff, uh because if we had been able to address the um, the bylaws changes last month, um, it will be it showed that um, I wanted to have um, I thought that it was important because uh, of the amount of people. The, the lack of, of, of quorum, the amount of quorum that we had to disperse money and the way that the, um, the meeting was represented so and set up. But uh, I don't think it's appropriate for someone from who is a founder and member and on the board of, of a committee or a, an organization that is on the receiving end of finances and uh, all of our hard work um, for fundraising uh, to, to be instrumental in the distribution of it. So I object to her, her nomination on this committee. Sandra, I can't help but agree with you on that. I agree also. And I can't help but disagree with her because she's been a member of this co uh, uh, club before BVAD. So um, I don't understand the problem. Okay. Um, I'd Do I like get to, to speak? <laughs> to, um, I'd like to move that we remove no, Jamie no, Eikhoff no. from consideration for, for- Do I get to speak as I've been nominated? I'm just uh, There's a motion on the floor. Go ahead, go ahead. There's a motion on the floor. I second. second. I second it. Well, we seconded that uh, there, uh, I, I, I'm going to rule the the motion out of order. The, the, yeah. the, the appropriate uh, approach to um, uh, this would be to vote against uh, uh, Ms. Eikhoff, uh and myself, if that is your wish, uh, 
for for these for these chairs. And I uh, that being the case, that there does appear to be some controversy. I'm going to take the nominations separately. There being no further nominations, uh, so and we will vote, vote first uh, for or against, as the case may be, Jamie Eikhoff for as a member of the um, Budget and Finance Committee. And uh, may I speak? Yes, you may speak. Okay, I'd like to introduce myself to everyone. Thank you. Um, the reason I, um, I I did nominate myself to help Bob on the Budget and Finance Committee because for years, no one else has stepped up to help him in that role as far as I can tell. Um, I'm an owner of a small business. I uh, run Budget and Finance and I can read a PL of 24 staff members and multi-million dollar budgets every single year working with federal government, state government and local commercial clients. Um, I have also was a founder, am a founder of VBAD. Um, it was originally founded and cooperated with NEBCD from the get-go. Um, we've, we've always felt ourselves as the street team of the NEBCD. The NEBCD is a great fundraising tool and committee and group, and you guys are fantastic at that. And it was a great marriage of the field team that would be going out and knocking on the doors. Um, I do wanna clarify a very big information, misinformation. NEBCD does not give money to be bad, um, as it's been explained. The, the NEBCD agrees to purchase certain things like the hustle expenses and pays for those straight out of the budget of the NEBCD. I think my I've been working with Brian Jarvis um, and Bob as the lead financial uh, contact with the BBAD fundraising. I work all the Act Blue pages and I work closely with Brian on uh, keeping track of where those monies go already. <coughs> So it's a natural fit for me to co-chair with Bob to just share and to be present in those meetings and to um, collaborate on how those expenses for um, NEBCD would be um, spent. Um, if there was any sort of conflict, of course, I would recuse myself on any vote, but I'm there to help. And, um, you know, that's, that's, I'm here to serve. I've been a member for over five years and I feel like I've been a member of NEBCD before I was a member of BBAD, but BBAD also operates under an official written document of memorandum of uh, agreement. So there is not some fantasy relationship. It is a written document that uh, both boards agreed to. So, um, it is very much the same organization um, because we operate together and our funds are reported to the TEC as a bundle. So um, anyway, thank you. And I hope you have, I have your vote. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, I, I'm going to proceed to a vote uh, on Jamie, uh, separate from myself um, because there does, does appear to be controversy. Uh, I think there's some comments. There might be comments or questions, Bob. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Linda, Rux. Unmute. Can't unmute. Okay, there you go. Sarah? That, I'm Sarah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Linda. Linda. Okay, hold, hold on. Sorry. Sarah. Okay. Actually, um, I've forgotten what I was going to ask or say, so I'll come back to it when I get there. So hey, I'm sorry. Sarah, fire away, Sarah. Hi. Okay, this is Sarah again. I um, I would like to say something on behalf of Jamie. Jamie is very meticulous, and she is there for everyone to not only follow the lead that she is presenting but she's a professional whether you like whether you like her disposition on that day or not she still follows through with her work so i'm gonna vote for jamie please do the same thank you all right thank you uh, I think richard the, miles the, the the time is going late uh okay. and um Oh, please uh, allow I, some more. We have a, a number of other positions to, to, to address. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is so we're going to vote yeah. for or against uh, Jamie Eikhoff for, um, as a member of the Budget and Finance Committee, co chair of the Budget and Finance Committee. Yes or no? Al Kisling has his thumb up too. 
Okay. I can't seem to get this thing to work. So I'm not, James James Lucas not, is waiting uh, to see. The, uh, there, I, at this at this point, I have uh, forty one yeses and one thumb up uh, and a hand up. So let's see. So forty one yes. Seven, no, uh, one, thumb. Okay, uh, Jamie uh, Eikhoff is, a, is elected a co-chair of the um, Budget and Finance Committee. Now, moi, uh, I am, uh, you'd have to vote for or against me as a member of the, uh, as a co-chair of the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, Al is sharing his screen right now with me. Al, if okay. you can stop sharing. Well, I've got 30 votes. Oh, shoot. In favor of uh, uh, only one husband. against. What's happening here? Yes, yes, there's something going on with the screen. We are seeing oh, Al. Okay. Okay. okay, we're back on. <laughs> yes, please recount. Okay. So we're up to 35. And we can vote for both, correct? Yes. Because there are two co-chairmen, co chair of personship. Okay. All right. Um, I, I have enough votes to say that, yes, I'm elected. And we have 46 <laughs> yeses. What's going on? No. Gloria is sharing her, her screen. Uh, for what purpose? Gloria, could you no, it's an accident, I'm sure. Oh. Just seeing if we're hats. <laughs> Zoom hacking. Stop share is, is just press the stop share, which will be up at the top. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so, uh, so we have I voted yes. I don't know. Four chairs of the budget finance. Let's move on to campaign and candidate recruitment. Um, and the uh, two um, candidates there are um, uh, Ian Strauss. And, and I can't find my, uh, Ian Strauss uh, and Colt Osborne. Uh, we can take that vote as a, a unit or individually as, as the case may be. Uh, Bob Como? Mr. Chair, I would go out on a limb and make a recommendation that all the rest of the people be elected at the same time. If somebody right. has any objection to any of them, they can pull it and we can do is that. that, that is, is that your motion? That is my motion. I, I second. I, I second. second the motion. Second. Can I nominate? Are there any some? nominations from the floor, though? We need to Are make there sure any nominations that. From the floor? I nominate okay. Andres for communications. And I'm, I'm going to nominate Eva Guzman to replace John Goodman, who removed his name. And I second that. Oh, what's going on? Okay. Um, John Goodman, I believe, Mabel, was that correct? John Goodman removed or? Yeah, John Goodman has, has, um, has uh, yeah. declined to uh, be uh, reelected. And that would make uh, Carla Zaney and Eva Guzman uh, the, the, the nominees uh, for the, uh, for the uh, co chair uh, personship of the precinct uh, organization. Someone is sharing their screen. I apologize for the interruption. Membership. Oh, that yeah. wasn't me. I'm tired of that. Mr. Chair, that is a friendly <laughs> amendment. Gloria, Gloria Robles, could you, could you unshare your screen? Please? Stop the share. Sorry. Both of those would be friendly amendments, Mr. Chair. Those would be friendly amendments. Uh, assuming you could have tri chairs in the communications. Uh, we, we're the the, um, the bylaws call for two chairs of all committees uh, except. No, uh, events and fundraising. No. Um, so, uh, but I know. Um, so, bit, I accept the friendly amendment uh, for the precinct organization and then for communication, which suggests that we pull that out separately. 
All right. So we will, we will. Yeah. Um, I'll second that. Yeah, okay. Someone so is that, still that sharing is their screen. The motion, the, the motion would be that yeah. um, we uh, elect the, the slate of candidates uh, as re recommended by the nominating committee for the uh, co chairs for a candidate, uh, campaign and candidate recruitment, uh, events and fundraising. Uh, government action and monitoring, uh, membership, and precinct organization with substituting the name of Eva Guzman for John Goodman, who has withdrawn, uh, and um, Carla Zaney. Uh, is, uh, we can proceed to a vote on, on that uh, point. Okay. And what about my nomination? Pardon me? My nomination. It's Oh, that's it's separate. separate. That's, okay. That'll have to be separate because we're, we have three candidates for two positions. No problem. Who's sharing their screen? <laughs> A co-host can stop, can boot Gloria out from sharing. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, all right. <laughs> well, Gloria, come on, Gloria. We can't do that. <laughs> but I wish you would stop sharing your screen. That would be good. All right. Good. So uh, please vote for the slate as I have stated it. Or again, as the case may be. There are, there are 65 eligible voters. We have 44 in favor. Uh, the slate is, uh, is, is elected. All right, now there are, uh, Two positions uh, and three candidates for communications co-chairs: uh, John Owens, Martha Spinks, uh, and uh, 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 Andres Lopez. <coughs> John Owens is unable to be present today because uh, of a death in the family. Um, so. What is the will of the, of the, of the body? Um, okay. I have a quick question. This is Gina. We're voting for all three? You're voting for two of three. So we're what taking I, one I will, at a time? We will do it one at a time. We will begin with um, uh, John Owens. All those in favor of John I'm, like, I I'm sorry, I have a quick question. How many slots do we have? Two? We have two. Okay. Can I uh, introduce? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. Um, I have to clear the clear the votes. All right. So, all right. I'm gonna clear again. All right. So we're we're voting. For... I think Andres wants to talk. Okay. Yeah, Hello, Andres. Hi. Hi. Uh, can I introduce Gina myself? Sure. Hi. Uh, my name is Andres Lopez. I've been uh, I've been doing this work for the party for communications with with Jamie Eikhoff and uh, Sarah Aranda. Uh, we I we are I'm currently doing this work. Uh, I would love to do this work for the Northeast Democrats. I. Uh, I hope I can earn y'all's vote and support. Thank you. So nobody left. All right. We're going to begin uh, with uh, voting for. Sure so uh, remember, we're going to. This will be an exclusive vote. Uh, if you vote for for one, uh, you can vote for two candidates, uh, but not 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 three. Um, all right. So the vote will be for. Uh, John Owens. John Owens is the first person up. Those in favor, uh, please mark yes. Yeah. He didn't pop. Okay, I see. I'm hearing you over. You're yeah. not muted according to this. Okay, 
I have 31 votes in favor of uh, 32 votes, thir 31 and now, 31 votes in favor of John Owen. All right. And, and Bob, Bob, yeah. do we st uh, do we still going to have the uh, member at large as well? No, we already voted on that last month. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, I, I must have missed that one then. You missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, I was it. I was at the last month meeting. I didn't, you know, maybe I missed it. <laughs> okay, because that's why I, that's right. what okay. I was on, and I was wondering if I'm still on that. All right. Yes. Yeah, uh, no, you're still on because you were elected last year. Um, oh, okay. We voted for Madeline now. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, Bob, I don't believe my vote got counted. Would you put me on the list for John? For, for John? Yes, please. Okay. Plus one. All right. For um, uh, Martha Spinks. For Martha Spinks. Only reason why I'm going for my okay, 33. And for, um, okay, thank you. It's 35 right now. 35. 35. All, right. All right. So, um, did you clear that? Okay, sir. All right. And for uh, Andres Lopez. Andres Lopez. I count twenty twenty-nine. Um okay. Bob, some people must be voting twice. No, you can vote twice. You can't vote three times. That's all. <laughs> You can vote for two, you vote for two or three candidates. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I I I, sh I show thirty. Uh, so I show thirty votes for. Okay. So um, John Owens and Martha Spinks are elected. Uh, Andres Lopez, we would be delighted if you would uh, cooperate on the uh, the communications uh, committee. Um, uh, but uh, John Owens and Martha Spinks are elected. Okay, let's move on. So the next item of business is, next item of business is item B, a consideration of one amendment to the NABCD bylaw <clears throat> to amend the fourth paragraph, the meeting forum, of Article 6, meetings of the NEBCD bylaws that add new language after nine membership constituted forum at membership meetings as follows. However, for approval of the expenditure of- No, no that, that, is, that is not the, the, the amendment the to the bylaw. Uh, of uh, the membership whose dues are current shall be required. And this was submitted by uh, uh, Sandal uh, Thompson. Okay. Sandra has Point of is, order. Yes. Does this need to be pulled from the table? Because this was tabled at the last meeting. So according to Robert, right. um, this would need right. to be pulled from the table with a vote. Uh, you, your, your, your point of order is well taken. Uh, this matter needs to be removed from the table, uh, taken off the table. Um, and we will take a vote uh, of that, which it is a... a, a, a a majority, a simple majority vote. Uh, oh, so, oh, 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 slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we will take off, we are going to move to take off the table the uh, proposed amendment to the NEBC bylaw. Uh, to take it from the table requires only a simple majority. Um, All those in favor of removing, uh, uh, taking uh, this matter off the uh, off the table 
and bring it into live consideration, please vote yes. Those opposed to taking it off the table, uh, please vote no. I can't. I show a vote of 17 to 17. I show a no vote of 18 and a yes vote of 16. The matter is not, is uh, remains on the table, will not be considered. All right. So uh, we will move on. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Uh I'm not sure I understood what we were voting on. Uh, uh, could you explain to me um, uh, exactly was it we, we you're going to take this off of the agenda and remove it to another time or you're going to we're not going to address it? Uh, the, 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 uh, I, I, my Robert's rules are a little getting a little vague here, but when you uh, to, re to remove an item that has been tabled at a previous meeting to a, a specific meeting, it was tabled to this specific meeting. That's right. Uh, and we're so we a, a, uh, a vote to remove an item, the item from the table. That is to uh, take the, the matter back into active consideration. Okay. Uh, a vote, uh, a yes is to remove it from the table. That is to take it into active consideration. Okay. Vote no yeah. is to uh, leave it on the table. Leave it on the table. Okay. Yes. On the table okay. So, did everybody the, understand the, that? The future meeting. Uh, but could uh, we? Uh, we uh, yes, we did. Can, can I clarify when you when you vote? Not uh, what that does is leave it off the table indefinitely. Yes. So, so at some subsequent table, meeting, you could vote to take right? it off the table. But for now, it's been voted not to take off the table. But it yes. then stays off the table indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so right. um, could we, could could we, did everybody understand that when they voted no, that well, they were well, going to remove it from well, consideration? Yeah, 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 I understand. If they didn't, it's a little late now, though. Yeah, move on. I understand. Yeah. All right, everybody I understand. the matter that. remains on the table, um, which means it can be considered at a, at a future meeting. All right. Yeah. That's good. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to the, the NBCD um, Fiesta 